Hey guys, I, uh, I'm i gonna post to this channel a video that I made for my other channel. I've got another channel that's kind of health related, not too, too music centric. But um, in a nutshell, I had a heart attack and was in the hospital and it could have been fatal. So anyways, I figured I'd update you guys here. I'll just, I already recorded a pretty good video for the other channel, so I'll just segue into that one right now. Hey guys, it is uh, April 30th, Friday, April 30th, 2022, and I am 20, what? 29th. It is Friday, April 29th, and I am in a heart hospital because I woke up in the middle of the night with some chest pains that I experienced similarly the night before, and they woke me up. I thought I was just heartburn or something like that, and I am... Not, I wasn't feeling well, and I tried to do some Wim Hof exercises to make it go away, and it didn't. And I woke up my wife and said, I think I need to go to the emergency room and have my heart checked out. And they found some elevated enzymes or proteins that the heart gives off when it's in duress. And so now I'm at a heart hospital specific, and I'm in the bed. I have two lines, one in my arm, one in my wrist, and I am probably going to have an angiogram done today. So it's kind of shocking to me because you guys that follow my channel know that I try to be healthy and eat healthy. And I told these, the nurses that, and they said, you know, sometimes your genetics are just so strong that it doesn't matter. And, but fortunately I'm in a good spot. If they find a blockage or anything funky like that, I think they can do a stent or whatever it is and help at that point. Or if they just say, hey, your blood's a little too thick, maybe you need a thinner, or you need blood pressure medication. My blood pressure runs kind of high. It's usually around the 135 to 45, uh, anywhere from 88 to 95 on the bottom. So, I'm, I mean, I'm feeling it now too. It happens right here. Like this is my sternum, so it's my right side, not my left side. And it's just a mild cyclic, pain that comes in there. It's tense, like a squeeze and fist kind of thing. And I can feel it into my clavicle, sometimes into the back shoulder blade, and even into the right arm as it's trying to output your upper cervical output for the nerves in the blood. But it it's painful. It was painful enough for me to really be concerned about it and uh, have her take me to the hospital. I'm going to be hospitalized for at least another day. I've, I've been here overnight, kind of, and after they do the angiogram, they keep you for observation, so it looks like noon on Saturday, tomorrow, will be the earliest that I'm out of here. But I don't feel bad. They asked, did I feel weak or stumbly or did I have trouble pronouncing words? None of that's happened. I just simply have that pain right there in the off right of my chest. So I'm going to record a little more after and get some more experiences in this, but just keep me in your thoughts and prayers. Appreciate you guys who follow the channel. So this spot's where they went in at my wrist, and what they do is they uh, stick a tube basically into that insertion point, and that tube has everything that's needed to fix the vessel. It has a little bitty camera. It has stent built up. It can measure the width of the, of the vein, so they stick the right size or make the stent the right size. And and it has a, like the way to go in there through that portal and move around and unblock. You know they inflate it and then unblock the um, artery or whatever's blocked up and and then insert the stent all in that same input right there. So this is where they went in my wrist for the angiogram. That's the site. It's not happy. I'm not happy. So here's an update on what happened to me. We weren't told until this morning that I actually had a heart attack. Apparently two of the three main uh, vessels that come out of the heart that push blood everywhere in the body, one of them was 99% blocked and the other was 95% blocked. And uh, I don't know if I said the story in the, in the old video, but I, I felt weird at the event where we were at and I thought I was dumping from BSG 
and it wasn't dumping, it was the actual heart attack happening. And <clears throat> it didn't stop, like it, it wouldn't fully walk, so it wasn't a, not at a cardiac arrest kind of situation. But it, it kind of went away and I went home and then I woke up at 1 a.m. and it was feeling just as intense. And on a scale of one to 10, I'd call it a eight or a nine. It was really, really, really painful. And I tried to do some Wim Hof exercises and tried some cat-cow stretches and nothing would alleviate it. That's when I just told my wife we need to go to the hospital. So anyways, we the other video, I think I said I, I had a, two stents put into those locked arteries. And uh, she confirmed with me that I actually, after the stents, I was having a lot of pain still. And they had knocked some plaque and debris loose. That's what the angioplasty does. But then they'll put stents in the area that they cleaned up to reinforce the walls. And when they knocked some of that debris loose, it went on to spill off into some of the smaller arteries and maybe cause minor blockages there. Don't know. But I felt really bad last night and now I feel much better. And the doctor said that it's expected things like that happen when they knock debris loose. But I um, have one more day of recovery. This will be the I guess second and a half day, kind of. And then I'll get to go home, provided I'm still on the upward path. So I appreciate all, you know, thoughts and prayers from you guys. And by the time I post this video, I'll already be home and and walking and doing the recovery stuff. I'm gonna have follow-ups with the heart hospital and I'm gonna have uh, medications that are mandatory at this point. Make a few lifestyle changes um, for sure. And uh, we'll see where we go from there. Um, one of the things they said was a normal heart operates at about 65% capacity, which sounds weird to me. I would think it's 100. But when they did the uh, sonic, echo sonic cardiogram, whatever, it was 55%. Um, the doctor just came in and said that there was a side of my heart where since it was getting low blood flow, the muscles might have atrophied a little bit. And he said, sometimes whenever they resume blood flow, it bounces right back and is, is really good. Tomorrow morning, they're going to do a new sonogram and see if it's doing better or it's still weaker. Either way, he assessed me at about 55% capacity, which if I look at his numbers versus 100, that puts me in at about 80% function, which I think is still good considering I just had a heart attack. So we'll see how they, I'm going to improve all of it. I'm going to do what they say and work on my health. And that's all you can do when you have news like this, right? I thought I was worried about my hernia. Take care. See you guys. Well, guys, I'm back home. This is the post-hospital video. This should be the last segment of this thing. I got to go home today. It's Monday, and it's May 2nd, I think. And... um so I stayed in the hospital, heart hospital a lot longer than I thought I was going to be there. I kept having some residual pain. They wanted to make sure that I wasn't having more heart attacks, basically, and I wasn't. It was um, inflammation from all of the trauma that happened in that area. And um, they kept giving me this like fentanyl and tortosol or something like that. But all of these medicines would simply help the inflammation go down and the pain would go away. And I kept having, I would take a deep breath and at the apex of that deep breath, I would have um, pain that felt like, the best I could describe it is like an ulcer in my throat, way down deep. It was usually was like right there. And the doctor said that it's very common for people that have had a, a heart attack that it is inflammation of the sacs that rub each other um, between your heart fluid sac and your lungs fluid sac. So when, the deep, when that breath gets deep, they rub and it causes just some irritation. It's gotten better every morning. So each day it's better and better. I think even now I'll, I'll raise my finger up whenever I feel some pain of some sort. It's almost at the very, very end of it. And, and it used to be earlier. So it's, it's way better. I still feel a little bit of irritation, but it's very, very mild. Um, whereas before it felt kind of like a sort like I'd been screaming all day or a cactus had been put down there and uh, itched raw that throat. But I'm home. My plan is uh, I have to be off work two weeks. I can't lift more than eight pounds. 
they give me restrictions that sound silly to me sometimes, but I, I mean, I understand that the reason, but it's just like, I, I'm not really supposed to lift my arms over my head and reach for stuff. And uh, what I lift can't be heavier than a milk jug. And, and the idea is, is that those stents are in and my heart is still in a compromised state. And so we don't really want to push it and make it have to work hard. They want me to get up and uh, walk around, you know, several times a day, but nothing big. Like I'm, I'm imagining probably not a mile, probably like a block around my, you know, mailbox and back, this kind of thing. I don't know. But I'm going to be compliant to whatever they say. Um, I'm on tons of medications that just seem, you know, like a big hassle, but they're necessary. They're, three of them are blood thinners, and so there's a chance of me having a bleeding issue. So I have to be extra careful until we start to reduce those. And I think the first reduction is in a month. So for one month, at least, I need to be hypervigilant and try to not cut myself or um, bang myself up. Or one of the nurses said that he, the worst thing that they could think of is if you're very active and you have a head injury, it could cause brain bleed that would lead to a lot of trouble. So I've just got to take it easy. You know, I won't be back to work for two weeks. So at least two of those weeks, I won't, I won't worry about it. And my work's not super strenuous, so I should be should be okay there. But uh, I feel a lot better than I did for sure. I think my heart's probably functioning better because if the arrhythmia that I've always felt, I hardly even notice now. So maybe, I mean, who knows? Maybe at the end of all this, I'll have a stronger heart and, and I won't be so tired through the afternoons and, and will even feel better. Who knows? I'll stay doing what I need to do. Either way, um, I probably wouldn't be here if it wasn't for um, recognizing that it was different and... You know, I, I, again, I tried my breathing exercises, I tried things, but whenever you can, f you feel something like that that's not normal, you got to take quick action. As soon as I woke up, my wife, she, she popped out of bed and took me to the ER, and if it wasn't for her quick action and, and my lack of being stubborn, you know, take a Benadryl and go to sleep, I probably wouldn't have been here now. Um, so, thankful for all of that. I'm thankful for my friends and family and, and, and you guys. This channel is very therapeutic for me. I can look back over these videos I've made over the years and see what I thought at certain stages of my life and how I viewed health and where I was right, where I was wrong. You know, I don't do this channel for a living. I don't, I don't make a living off this channel. For me, it's just a, a chronicle of how my life has been. And if I do pass away anytime soon or earlier than I feel like in life, the channel will be here where people could, you know, see how our vacation went or just things like that. So it's important to me. I'm glad you guys enjoy the channel that do and view. And I appreciate your thoughts and prayers.